Hello students, welcome back after the break. We were discussing about the various aspects of protein structure and our today's discussion is all about the third level of protein structure that is tertiary structure. So we have discussed till now that by tertiary structure we mean to the overall three-dimensional arrangement of all atoms present in a protein or a polypeptide chain. And how is the tertiary structure generated? A tertiary structure is generated in course the elements of secondary structure are combined together to form the repeating units of the overall tertiary structure of a polypeptide, so called a super secondary structure, also called a super secondary motive or a super secondary fold. And according to SCOP database, that is structural classification of protein database, there are different arrangements of super secondary secondary motives or folds, it brings into consideration different classes of super secondary motives or folds made up of alpha helix like alpha helix combined together, beta sheets combined together, alpha, beta, alpha, uh, alpha helix and beta sheets present in an alternating form, then beta sheet, beta sheet combined together on beta barrel and some many more things. Now as I said, as I have just said earlier in my previous discussion in the first part of my lecture that uh, in order to before we study directly move on to the structural details of the tertiary structure, the third level of the protein structure, the tertiary structure of a protein, we need to have a thorough knowledge about fibrous and globular proteins. So before considering the two higher levels of protein structure, that is the tertiary and the fourth or the quaternary structure, we need to have a knowledge about fibrous and globular proteins. So what are fibrous proteins? Actually fibrous proteins are those proteins which have a uh, super secondary structure which have a tertiary structure combined of pleats or strands. And what are globular proteins? Globular proteins are the proteins which have the elements of secondary structure combined together to form a domain or a compacted loop or in the form they are elements of secondary structure are arranged to form super secondary structures in a globular protein in the form of loops or folds. Now, so this is the first major difference between fibrous and globular proteins. A huge difference or a substantial noteworthy difference lies in structural arrangement. Now, and that is that fibrous, the secondary structures, fibrous proteins usually have a single form of secondary structure which forms the repeating monomeric unit of the three-dimensional structure of a fibrous protein. It, it is made up of a single type of secondary structure which is repeated several times while a globular proteins have more uh, 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 usually consist of more than one form of secondary structure and consist of varied forms of secondary structures arranged together. So this is the second major difference between fibrous and globular difference in the structure of fibrous and globular proteins. They are functionally also, they are functionally different and they vary strictly speaking in a sense that fibrous proteins actually are the parts of proteins or make up the proteins which uh, act to play strength or provide strength and make up the structure of hair, bulls, nails, claws, or vertebrates, etc. While globular proteins, which have a globular structure in which the elements of secondary structure are compacted and folded to form globe folds and loops, such proteins like hemoglobin, myoglobin, are actually the regulatory proteins, regulatory enzymes, regulatory enzymes. They do not perform structural functions, but globular, such globular proteins actually have regulatory functions like hemoglobin and other functions like hemoglobin, lysozyme, ribonuclease C, myoglobin, etc. So here we have come across three major differences between fibrous and globular proteins which will help us to work out a strong or sharp line of contrast between fibrous and globular proteins. Now another the third that is uh, we'll take a look over important structural aspects of few very important fibrous proteins and few very important globular proteins number one and number two then we'll directly move on to the super secondary motifs which form the structural elements for the tertiary structure of 
for protein on the basis of SCOP database, that is structural classification of protein database. And number three, at last, we will study about certain kinds of bonds which help to stabilize the three-dimensional structure of the polypeptide or a protein, which is called that, and that which is called as the third or the tertiary level of a protein structure. So now let us study about the special features, structural features exemplified by few fibrous and globular proteins. The most common of the fibrous proteins include the proteins that make up hair, nails, wool, like collagen, like keratin, like proteins make up of organic matrix of bone, tendons made making up of cornea, of eye, etc. Then among the fibrous protein, other than keratin and collagen, we are also having a major form of fibrous protein called silk fibroin which is obtained from spider webs which is obtained from insects etc and the most prominent of the globular proteins include human serum albumin that was the first globular protein to be elucidated sorry human serum albumin is simplest of, of, of all globular proteins although myoglobin I mostly was the first globular protein whose structure was elucidated and maintained in detail so among the globular proteins we have uh, hemoglobin which binds oxygen, myoglobin which binds oxygen and also supplies oxygen to muscle, muscle tissues. Then we have lysozyme which is found in human tears. We have ribonuclease C. Then we have human serum albumin. Now human serum albumin is a very simple globular protein because it consists of 585 residues with a molecular weight ranging around 64,500 Dalton which all together are compiled in the form of a single polypeptide chain. Having been a protein with a single polypeptide chain, human serum albumin among all globular proteins is often considered to be the globular protein with a very simple structure. Now let us switch over to the structural aspects of few very important fibrous proteins. But before that, let us go for again, again, go for one more break. I'll resume that after a very short break, and in between, keep on studying about the differences, about the features, about the special structural and functional differences lying between the two classes of proteins, which need to be considered for studying higher order structure of proteins. That is fibrous proteins and globular proteins. Before the, without studying about few fibrous and globular proteins, we cannot switch over directly to the study of the structural aspects of the tertiary structure of a protein. So we do need to have a thorough knowledge about the structural aspects of fibrous and globular proteins. And I came up, we came up with very sharp contrast and line of differences between fibrous and globular proteins and with examples of few fibrous proteins like fibroin of spider webs and like keratin, collagen and among prominent examples of globular proteins like myoglobin, hemoglobin, ribonuclease, lysine, I talked about human serum albumin so stay tuned for the next segment for the concluding segment and I'll be discussing about the structural aspects of these common fibrous and globular proteins okay see you all after a very short break